Hello and welcome to another Flux tutorial. Today we'll be talking about two highly requested features, impedance control and differential pair routing. We will learn how to use these advanced routing features, how it works under the hood, and how to create your own parts with these capabilities. So let's dive in. PCB designs are becoming increasingly complex, with more interfaces and high-speed demands than ever. Even though impedance matching may appear daunting, Flux manages all the complexities in the background. We incorporated the impedance and differential pair metadata directly into components, significantly simplifying the routing process. Let's take a look at how it works. The whole process is quite easy. Let's take a look, for example, at an HDMI protection circuit. We just need to drag a few components into our canvas and route the HDMI interface. Once the schematic is finished, the first thing we need to do is to configure the stack up for our design. That will ensure that all the impedance calculations are done correctly and that the design will be easy manufacturable. Here we have a few examples from JLC PCB that we have already tried and manufactured. To write a differential pair, just hover over the pair and click to start routing. This will automatically initiate routing for both traces simultaneously. Flux ensures accuracy by mirroring the traces as they depart or arrive to paths. To write a single ended pair, you just need to click and then hit the command key. If you want to modify any trace that has already been placed, you just need to click on the trace and drag it. These traces have been automatically impedance match. To take the parameters, we just select the net, and we can see the total neck length, and also the control impedance parameters that have been used for this particular interface. There might be cases where the part that you drag from the library doesn't work immediately. For example, let's take a look at this USB-C receptacle. If we write the two different pair lines, like this, We can see that the two differential pair lines are not routed together. We can check in the net parameters that there's no differential pair or impedance parameters configured. Now this is where Flux implementation really shines. The only thing that we need to do is add the part type property to this part and set it to USB. Flux will automatically check every single pin inside the part and it matches it to a predefined set of pin names to automatically add impedance control and differential pair routing to this part. Now, there can be cases where you're dealing with an interface that hasn't been already set up in one of the predefined interfaces in Flux, or that your pin naming doesn't match the pin name that we match to internally. To add support for these type of parts, let's learn how impedance matching works under the hood and how you can add support for your own parts. Let's start by investigating the part from the previous example. Most of the configuration happens at the terminal level. In this case, each terminal with a differential pair configuration will have an extra few properties that define how that interface should work. In this case, we're talking about an HDMI interface, which has specific impedance parameters, pin delay parameters, and tolerances. The magic about this implementation in Flux is that all these parameters are baked in the part, so you don't need to worry about that when you're designing your project. We'll cover more about these parameters when we talk about configuring parts later in this video. Now, when all these parameters are configured, Flux will automatically create rules in the PCB layout to configure the nets so that they route it correctly. In this case, we can see that Flux configures the trace width, keep in and keep out rules with the right spacing and width depending on the impedance that was configured in the previous step. Now let's see how the process looks like if you want to add support for these features in your own parts. As we mentioned earlier in the video, the easiest way to add support for impedance matching for your own part is to make sure that your pins match the pin naming convention that we have set up internally. I left more information about how that naming works down in the description. And let's walk through the process that you need to follow if you want to add support for an interface that we don't currently support in Flux automatically. The easiest way to do that is to grab one of the terminals for another part that has already been configured. That will have all the properties already loaded so you can easily modify them. So click on the terminal, copy, and paste it on your own part. You'll eventually delete this terminal, but it will serve as a good reference to know which properties you need to add. Now let's click on the terminal and see which properties we're talking about. Many of these properties come already defined by the type of interface you're using. For example, control impedance, control impedance tolerance, per to pairs Qmax, PNs Qmax, all those are parameters that you should get from the reference of whatever interface you're trying to add support to. There are a few others that are particular to Flux and that we'll need to cover. There are four of these properties that you need to know about. The first one is bus type. In this case, you'll just name the interface that you're trying to design for. For example, if you're designing a PCI Express, HDMI, or USB interface, that's what you type here. The second one is bus group. This property is particularly important if your part has more than one, in this case, HDMI buses, or more than one PCI Express buses. 
each bus in your part should have a different bus group. For example, it could be called HDMI protected or HDMI 1 and HDMI 2. The third property is per role. In this case, we just need to define which role that pair serves in the bus. In the case of a simple USB, we're going to have one data line, so the pair role would just be D. But if you have more than one data line, it could be called T1, D2, etc. The fourth and final property is control impedance pair. In order for Flux to correctly detect the pairs, each pair will need a unique identifier in the control impedance pair. If you have more than one bus, which has the same pair, each pair on each bus will need to have a different name. For example, in this case, it will be TMDS-D2, but if you had another HDMI bus, it could be TMDS-D2 bus 1 or bus 2. To recap, let's see an example that we know already works. In this case, this part has two HDMI buses, so it serves as a good example. Let's say, for example, this TMDS-D2 plus lines. In the one on the right, the bus group is set to HDMI protected. In the one on the left, it's set to HDMI unprotected. This differentiates the two HDMI buses that it parse has. We can also see that the bus type is set to HDMI, the pair role is set to D2, or in this case, is set to D1. And finally, we can see that the control impedance pair is set to DMTS D2. This is the structure that you'll need to follow if you're going to be creating your own part. Now you should have a good idea on how to use or set up advanced routing in Flux. See you in the next one.